Lots of interest to, uh, around Canterbury. I think they'll probably be... That, Canterbury and the West Tigers will probably be the most anticipated sides heading in, into the new year in terms of uh, the changes to, to both organisations. At, at Canterbury, uh, you've got to change it at the top in terms of Cameron Serraldo, uh, who was... Uh, I've never seen anything like it for an assistant coach. The, um, the courting of him. Um, we saw it with Craig Fitzgibbon a little bit, but yes. it wasn't... As public, I, I thought with, with, with Craig Fitzgibbon, and Craig Fitzgibbon made it pretty uh, a line in the sand, saying, "I'm not going anywhere until this point." So, was that a reflection of how sought after he was in the market, or mm. just how publicly it was played out? I, I don't think this is Cam's doing, by the way, at he, all. He would no, hate it. He, yeah, he hated it. He hated being front and center and, and constant attention. It was uh, a bit of both, I think. Jimmy, I think it was definitely he was in demand. Yes, and he was the the coach, the young coach that everyone wanted if they're looking for what everyone perceives to be the the best young coach in the game. So that was part of it. Other parts were leaking from uh, yeah. different camps and meetings, you know, exposed and stuff. And, and and that was a key point as to why the Bulldogs were able to sign him because all those meetings that he had yeah. with Phil Gould, no one heard about. Exactly. So that 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 then gave him the confidence to think, okay, well, they've, they've made this promise mm. to me and followed through on it. Yep. So uh, the other thing is a five-year deal, which is almost unprecedented for a new coach to come in and get. But my understanding is, based on what we've seen from Cameron Serraldo already, there's nothing to suggest that they aren't correct in their decision. Yeah, it's the five-year deal for a rookie coach is unprecedented. Yes. And if I'm a rookie coach and you can get a five-year deal, you're jumping on it. Yeah. Right, so there's no doubt the Tigers offer also offered him a, a five year deal earlier in the piece, but um, the the questions around coaches is when it comes to wins and losses and how they react publicly with with the scrutiny, the pressure, everything that comes with being a head coach when you know players start to um, misbehave off the field and um, what pressure that builds on on a club when you you're one and three to start. I, a I was season. going to say three straight losses. How are you and going? That's that's when the, the the pressure's on. If you can't handle or you're not setting a good tone now where well, you're never going to in, yep. in the preseason. But yep. um, I like their recruits. They've been active. Reed Marnie um, is, is, solves a, a problem for them, although Jeremy Marshall King had his best year um, in, in 2022. But Reed Marnie is a, a, a step above that. Yes. Kick out is a huge point of difference um, offensively and defensively. He does such a, a good job. Yes. And, and think of that edge that they're going to have. They're going to have Addo Carr, uh, Kick out, Burden. And the center spots up for grabs. Okay, so it can uh, uh, just hearing about Alamotti, apparently he's 18 years of age and breaking records in the gym, like he's the strongest in the gym. So he's been a boom player for a quite some long time. time. Yep, that, and he had a few injuries this year, but they were that, they, that is the player they earmarked two or three years ago as the face of Canterbury's revolution in terms of their juniors. Okay, they haven't had yep. a, a decent amount of juniors, and, and it's really fallen away. Um, Canterbury's junior development, but they've got him earmarked as the next big thing. Gerald Skelton apparently is impressing everyone with his preseason. The other one who's impressing a great deal is Hayes Perham, mm. who's come across from Parramatta. Yeah. So didn't get a whole heap of opportunity there, but apparently is this outstanding trainer. And so when it comes to key position, and you just wonder too, the other, the other part of this too, I think they've, they their issue around number one and what they're doing yes. there, they, they went to Dufty last year and it just didn't, didn't work, work out. Yep. And Kyle Flanagan, the, mm. the number seven. They're still, they've still got the issues around there. Yeah. The big question mark is, does the side that we're looking at now, is that the same as the side that runs out for round one of 2023? I think so. I, I don't know if there's going to be a, a, a huge key or significant sign. And you're, you're obviously alluding to someone like Mitch Moses. Or or in the fullback position. Mm. Stephen Crichton. Stephen Crichton. I, I don't see those players leaving their current clubs. Right. The, Heading into 23. Whether it happens for 24, that's a different story. I think they'll both leave, right. Pride and, and, yep. and Moses. But uh, And whether they, they both end up or one ends up at the Bulldogs will be significant. But I think Penrith have remained committed to, to Crichton for, for 2023. I don't, And they've shown in the past with Coruscant, Kikiao, Burden, um, that players that do sign early elsewhere, well, they can still stay there and play out that 12 months. I was just about to say, don't the lessons of the past tell them that you just hang on to him, yes. even though he's leaving? Because yes. Matt Burton, are you serious? Are you serious? Said Greg Alexander on NRL 360. Yes. And that was, well, why don't you let Burton go now? Why would we? By the end of the year, yeah. he's a premiership winner, Dallium Centre of the year. 
and left on good terms despite asking for a release at least once, probably twice. Right. Having already agreed to to join the Bulldogs. And, and Penrith like, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. And he still showed, the club showed their strength. And, and Matt Burden, to his credit, showed that he could put it to a side and, and, and really uh, play some good footy. So I don't think, I would highly doubt that Stephen Crichton is not at Penrith next year. Yeah, I, I think that's right. It, it would be... How do you reconcile that? A player swap? Like, you know, mm. what what could they possibly the, the, do? The only way they could do it and is if they feel like Stevens on is on a significant salary in, in, in 2023 and they, they go, okay, well, we can try and save some cap space yep. and, and rejiggle some things because Matt Burton wasn't on big money That's at, right. at Penrith. But Kikau was, Coruscant was. Um, and they still stayed out that that time there. The other thing about Crichton is you you if you do go all in on him for the Bulldogs, and we're making an assumption around this that that, that who's going to play fullback, and it may not solve the problem of twenty twenty three, and that is can he play fullback? Mm. He's played six games there, which yeah. is, is that a big enough data set to be able to go? The the thing that works in your favour here is the coach yes. knows him intimately. He would know. Yes. Cameron Serraldo would know if Stephen Crichton could handle fullback. He would have seen it at training. He would have seen it in the lower grades. He coached him in the lower grades. So he knows exactly what he would be buying. So I wouldn't have an issue if someone like Cameron Serraldo splurged on uh, Stephen Crichton. Tavita Pangai Jr. is 10 kilos lighter. Mm. Like His best football is state of origin class, international class. Yep. They just didn't see it often enough out of him last year. And – you think now with with the people that, that they've got coming in then that forward pack and Ryan I think Ryan Sutton's gonna be an understated buy for them. Yep. I think he's gonna do the the grunt work, play some big minutes. Luke Thompson, if he can play the whole season, he's still a genuine front row uh, an elite front rower. Yes. Um so if he can get out a, a full season there, Andrew Davey will be a, a work rate sort of guy, plug a, a gap on an edge, ability to start if needed, but um to that may will mean that Tavita Pangai shouldn't feel a burden to carry the load. And you sense that he started last year, even in the preseason games, um, wild because I, I don't know if he had in his mind, I need to be the enforcer, I need to do this. Yeah. I'm on, and it just clouded exactly the way he needed to play. But if they can get him in bursts, playing some elite damaging football, then you know, you've know you got Kikau, Hangai, um Luke Thompson, and it becomes a really strong forward pack. Ray Faye Taylor Mariner didn't play a whole heap of footy last year. The footy he did play was very mm. impressive. Uh, Tavita Pangai Jr. and Cameron Serraldo have a relationship dating back to when uh, Serraldo was playing at the Knights, and he was a young teenager. I think his brother was playing there. The other thing around the Bulldogs and what they've done, and I know you know this is, might be hard to see on the field at times, but off the field, they've recruited almost best in business. Right, yeah. Travis Tuma is there uh, from the Roosters via the Rabbitohs. Chad Randall is highly thought of as an assistant coach there with Cameron Serraldo. Uh They've got a sprint coach, Ruben, who yep. did all that work. From Manly. With, yeah, from Manly. Yep. Uh, can't think of his he surname. He looked after Tom Trevojevic and his hamstrings. Correct, yes. correct. So um, they're, they're very, very confident in what they're putting together off the field. Still got some issues around their salary cap and what they can do on the field, but trending in the right direction. Are they a top eight side? No. I still think they're 12 months away right. from – if you ask me in 12 months, I'd say they're definitely a top eight side. I think this heading into next season, they'll be on the cusp of the eight yep. in, in that clutter between, you know, seventh and, and 10th or seventh and 11th and not much separates that. I would suggest if they make the finals next year, then they'd be super confident that Serraldo is the right person. If they make the finals next year, you'd almost, and they add one or two players, you'd almost tip them for the top four the following year. Exactly. Exactly. But I think that they're heading in the right direction. For the first time in a while, you can see that their recruitment has been smart. Yes. It, 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 it's been um, pinpoint. And you can see, okay, well, you can see the direction they're going. And the only way is up now for Canterbury. I think they're in for the next four or five years of some really consistent finals footy. I tend to agree with you. Not quite next year, pending who turns up mm. there. But the year after, then who knows?